peaceful as a baby sigh In my Tennessee mountain home Crickets singing in the fields nearby <laughs> Oh, hello again, thank you. Of course, now most of you know by now that this is about my favorite part of the show where I get to uh, visit with folks and friends that I'm very fond of. And I'm sure that there's somebody out there right now looking at me and saying, what's she doing with that outfit on that she wore on the Trio album? Well, the Trio album that I did with Linda Ronstadt and Emmylou Harris was a very special album to me. And the reason I'm wearing this tonight is because I've got Linda and Emmy hid over in the corner, and I'm going to walk over there, and we're going to visit and sing for you a little bit. So would you help me make welcome Linda Ronstadt and Emmy Lou Harris? Yeah. <laughs> well, look at us, cat girls. Hi, the partners. Howdy, darling. Thank you. You know, thank you, folks. Now, this is a real big treat for me because everybody, since I started the show, has wanted to know where Linda and Emmy are because Everybody kind of thinks of us as sisters, and you finally made it. You've been yeah. out on the road. What have you been doing lately? Well, I've been out on the road. I've been touring a lot and working real hard. And uh, You did an album? Don't you have a... Yeah, I have an album out. It's called Angel Band, and it's uh, some traditional songs. An acoustic album that I did a few years ago, and we, we just now put it out. Great. So that's what I've been doing, Dolly. Well, that's a plenty. What have you been working on? All kinds of stuff. What do you I listen do? to Emmy's album a lot. Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're working um, on something special right now. I've been making an album of traditional Mexican songs that are a lot of songs that I learned from my father, because my family are Mexican. And um, it's going to come out in soon. <laughs> it's going to come out in soon. We tried to do this trio album for about 10 years. We started this. Well, we started trying to do it 10 years ago, and then our schedules got all haywire. And this past year, uh, Linda called Emmy and me up and said, let's do this album before we get so old, we can't sing. <laughs> so well, nobody's interested <laughs> Yeah, anymore, nobody's yeah. interested. So we did the album, and I'm real proud of it. And we're going to do, a, why don't you grab your guitar, oh, okay. and we'll do a, first here. Yeah, a few songs from that. We'd, we'd actually like to start with one called Dear Companion. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this? Okay, well, this song was written by a lady named Jean Ritchie, who's also very fine traditional um, singer and uh, dulcimer player, your companion. Oh. 
and I, I think we look kind of cute in our cowgirl outfits. We look like we look Patsy adorable. Montana and uh, yeah, well, <laughs> Calamity Jane and Annie Oprah. <laughs> Annie Oprah. That's Annie Oprah. Oprah. But anyway, this is really a treat. You know, when we were doing the trio album, we had to look for songs, and Linda and Emmy brought a whole bunch of songs, and I brought a few songs to the project. But when we were singing, Linda loves to sing background. She loves to sing the harmony. And it was very hard for us to talk her into doing a lot of the well, lead we vocals. Lot, we had done a lot of work on the album. And then we were having such a good time, it took us a while to realize that Linda wasn't singing lead on anything. <laughs> so, anyway, so this yeah. particular song, we, we said, you're going to have to sing something that you like to sing because you're going to sing the lead and let us do the harmony. So she said, well, I get to pick what I sing. And I said, fine. So tell us a little bit about the song you picked. Well, I just love the idea of three grown-up girl singers singing a song that had a line of, will there be any freight trains in heaven? You know, it was just irresistible <laughs> to me. Or so, else the idea of us being hobos. This is a song that uh, female Jimmy Rogers Equal rights for right. women hobos. <laughs> Last night as I lay on the boxcar Just waiting what will become of the hobo whenever his time comes to die? There's a master up yonder. It's my okay. show, and you That's get your right. way on the show. <laughs> we'll go right along now, just so I can get to do the one I'm yeah, featured we'll, on. Yeah. Right. Then we'll go back I and mess up. to sing all over your line. No, that was actually pretty good. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't supposed to sing on your line, but how did you do that? No. Oh. Yeah. Did you tell us oh. that we? She oh. stole that from Merle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Merle. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Those memories of you still haunt me Every night when I lay down I'll always love you, little darling Until the day 
Coffees, two coconut cream pies, a lemon meringue pie to go, and a big old piece of pie to eat here. Of course, I don't work for nothing. You gotta pay me. <laughs> Bubba, do you think that pie diet is working for you? You don't see no difference, huh? Well, you, you've only been on it for a year. And besides, you're a big bone person. You can carry it. Right. <laughs> Hello, Dixie's Place. Dixie talking. Oh, hi, Mr. Denton. Uh-huh. Yeah, well. Really? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll ask him. I'll check it out. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh, Carlos. See, Miss Dixie. <laughs> that was Mr. Denton on the phone. You know what a nervous uh -huh. Nelly he is. And what with these new immigration laws and everything, he, he just, well, Wants to make sure you're not in the country illegally. Ah, uh, Miss Dixie. Estoy sentido, estoy asombrado. You think that I, Carlos? Carlos, would you just cut to the bottom line? Are you legal or illegal? I'm a Yankee Doodle dandy. Yankee Doodle do or die. Okay, Carlos. <laughs> Pig person. Guy was nothing but a big pig person. Live around here, little girl. <sighs> Honey, you all right? Yeah, I guess so. Can I get you something? Oh, how much for a cup of coffee? Oh, coffee's 50 cents. Well, could I get half a cup for a quarter? Oh, don't you be silly. You have a whole cup of coffee. And how about a good old piece of pie? No, I, I can't afford any pie. I'm broke. Oh, we got a special today. We got pie and coffee, 10 cents. Oh, wait a minute, is that true? Cause, cause I don't like taking any handouts. Special of the day, ain't that right, Bubba? Huh? Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Can you dig in? You look about as hungry as a one-eyed dog on a gut wagon. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's something my daddy used to say. I hope I didn't spoil your pie. Well, I, I am kind of hungry. <laughs> I'm hitchhiking to Hollywood. You know, Hollywood, California. I'm gonna be a movie actress. You know, you shouldn't be hitchhiking. There's some pretty weird kooks out there. Tell me about it. But I can take care of myself. I always have and I always will. What's your name, honey? Valerie, with an I. Oh, that's a pretty name. You're a pretty girl. How old are you? I'm 20 years old. You're 20? Well, almost. I'm 18. <laughs> I was a lead in my high school play. You was? Everybody used to take me aside and say, you are so good. You know what? 
I am good. I'm real good. <laughs> I don't doubt it for a minute. You got the spunk. And I wish you good luck, too. Bubba, ain't you going out to Fresno? Oh, uh, yeah. Would you give this uh, young girl a ride to Hollywood? Oh, I don't know, Dixie. See, I'm, I'm carting perishables. My refrigeration's on the blink. I'm not sure that I... Bubba, please. Sure, come on. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you hold your horses now. When you get out to Hollywood and you get to be a big star, I want an autographed picture. You just sign it to Dixie. Love, Valerie, with an I. You bet. Thank you. Okay, good luck. Hey, Bubba, you drive careful, because you just happen to be carrying the most precious cargo of all, young dreams. I will. Thanks. Mothers, hold on to your sons and your daughters. Should Hollywood claim them, you'll hold them no more. For they'll become clay to the Hollywood potters. And there's no escape once they walk through its door.
Good man named Kaiser and Miller Helped to make things bright Mixing hot licks with vanilla Chibas Saturday Take a whack at it. <laughs> we need to catch it. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I now what lips. if I actually I'm hit this thing? Am I gonna here. hurt somebody? Hey! <gasps> hey. <laughs> On behalf of the New York Yankees, Dolly, we'd like to give you this fine jacket. Well, thank you. I'd like to jump in it. <laughs> oh, that looks great. I need a hat to go with this. Somebody we got, got a, a hat, hat somewhere. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I can get it over all this hair, but I can try. Need a couple body pins think? now. Does that look like an official <laughs> New York Yankee? There you go. <laughs> I'm going to a real special place now called the Novelty Club. That's where a lot of the world's best novelty acts go to see their favorite performers. Here's Daniel Rosen. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Daniel Rosen. Thanks. <laughs> Want to say something really cool? Watch this. Yow! <laughs> that was really good. I know you're all dying to applaud, but you don't know exactly when. Don't worry, I'll tell you when. OK, it's going to be coming up pretty soon. Now! Here's something you don't see every day. Face juggling. <laughs> now we know why. <laughs> the helicopter! <laughs> Masochistic juggling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that hurts so good. Yeah! Hey! Thank you! <laughs> hey, go on. Thank you. Hey, I think I have time for one last trick. I said I think I have time for one last trick. <laughs> this is one I invented. It's real cool. It's called the kick up into four clubs. Up, Shiva. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I wish you could see it from here. I wish I could see it from here. <laughs> this one's called the Air Traffic Controller's Nightmare. Meow. Meow. <laughs> now for the hardest part, stopping. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, no. I hate when this happens. <laughs> hey! Thank you. Hi, Dolly. The water's great. Stay tuned. Church in the morning, Dolly Dolly Parton Parton at night. night. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Well, This is the part of the show where we usually just chat and talk and share some good news, and you can ask me some questions if you like to. Anybody got anything they want to ask me? Hi there. Hi, how you doing? I'm fine. My name is Sharon Joyner. I'm from New Jersey. I got a two-part question. Okay. First of all, how high are your heels? My high heels are about four or five inches high. And how do you walk in them? Very carefully. I'm telling you. <laughs> My second question is, if you weren't singing, what would you be doing? 
Well, I really can't imagine what I would do if I couldn't sing. I would be very sad, first of all, but I used to think about being a missionary, and, you know, and I still might in, later on in, in my life. That's something I've always been fascinated with. And uh, I might have been a beautician or a madam. <laughs> Hi, I'm Devin Ronquist, and I wondered, uh, being a mother myself, what your mother gave you in terms of guidance that's led you to be such a, a wonderful person and such a great performer and had such good success. Well, thank you. I think my mother gave us love above most things, and she also gave us freedom. Mama never was, or my daddy. My daddy was a quieter person, but Mama never tried to mold us and shape us into saying, you've got to be like me or you've got to be like that. She always was real supportive and encouraged the ones of us that really wanted to go out and do something, and I always had a real outgoing personality, and she just sensed that I wanted to be something special and something different, because she was a preacher's daughter. And... Uh, my grandpa was very strict, and when she was young, she had never had her hair cut, and she always wanted to have her hair cut, but my grandpa wouldn't let her. And the first day that she married my daddy, she got her hair all cut off, and he almost left her because he had married her because she had long hair. <laughs> but anyway, so since then, she said, I'll never, you know, choke my kids or try to make them be anything that they're, they're not. So anyway, thank you very much. There's a lot of love in my family, and I am very close to them. Hi, I'm Michelle Finley from Pensacola, Florida. I just wanted to ask you, do you ever get tired of people bugging you? <laughs> do I ever get tired of people bugging me? Well, I really like the people. I always wanted to be a star, and I always said if I ever got to be successful, I'd never act like a snob or a smart aleck, and I don't think of it as people bugging me. Sometimes I just get tired and just want to go to bed, but that ain't got nothing to do with the people. Why, did you want to bug me? No, I no. just wanted to know. <laughs> I'd like to ask you, out of all the leading men that you've had, um, which one was the best kisser? All the leading men that I've had or that's worked well, with. Well, that's right there. <laughs> I'm not telling you all the leading men I've had. <laughs> well, I tell you, they all uh, are nice. I never met a man I didn't like. <laughs> and they all kiss pretty good. Uh, and if I said which one was the best, then I'd be in trouble with the others. But uh, that's a curious question. I'll tell you after we get off the television. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Which one would you most like to kiss of all my leading men that I've had? Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Burt Reynolds? Oh, Burt was great. He was here a few weeks ago. He, it was the date. But yeah, he's, he's a great kisser. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I... You're so glamorous and wear all your hair and your makeup. Do you ever take it all off and just put on Levi's and go out into the country? and get close to God and nature? Yes, I do. I, I'm a country girl at heart, and I was a tomboy. And that. I love all this sissy stuff and the frills, and I love playing in it. But I love to fish, and I love to camp out, and I often just throw this wig in the tallest tree and put on my jeans and just go for it, because I'm a, just a real down-home person, really. I'm very real to look so phony. <laughs> Hi, Dolly. My name's Kathy from Buena Park. Yes. I'd like to know, with all your family and friends, do you ever get lonely? Well, I get lonesome. I don't know that I get lonely. I think there's a, a difference in the word. I, mi I miss my folks a lot, and I miss the Tennessee Hills and that kind of thing. But I'm always so busy, and I try to make it a point not to ever let myself get in bad places. And, um, and I pray a lot, and I try to keep my strength up, my spiritual strength as well as my physical strength. But I think you always kind of you know, have some lonely times, and we're just people, you know, and it's like, even though we just, we sing and we always look like that we're always feeling good and happy, there are times when we get, you know, kind of sad, we meaning show people. Thanks for asking that. That's a Thanks. sensitive, caring question. Hello. I just wanted to ask you if it might be too embarrassing, you might not want to answer, but how old are you? Well, I'm not embarrassed at all. I'm really happy for every year that I've lived because I feel like I've accomplished a great deal in my life. I'm 41 years old. I was born January the 19th and 46. And uh, like I say, 10 years from now, I'll probably be sorry I told you that date, but I don't think so because I think you're only as old as you are and you should make the most of, of every year you live. Well, I, you I don't look think great. You, thank you. <laughs> I think you should be proud of yourself. Make every moment count. And when I get to looking too bad, I'll just put a sack over my head and come out and sing to it. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Dolly. I have two grandparents in Montana that I haven't seen for a long time. They live in Hamilton. And I was wondering if you'd blow them a big country kiss right in that camera I there. I sure would. <laughs> I sure would. This is for your grandparents. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, in Montana. Yeah. Thank you. I'll tell you what.
giving me the sign that that's all we have time for. And God bless every one of you. Sirs, the copper tubing you sent us was defective. I am returning it for a full, full lips. Oh, Dolly, I can't quit thinking about you. Oh, I love the way you say good night. When you do that song, I will always love you. Oh, I just love that. It seems like you're singing just to me. Oh, I just love when you do that. And when you do that little wink at the end and you smile and you go, bye bye. I just love that. Bye bye. Uh oh, uh oh. Have you finished that letter? Uh, uh, not quite, dear. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, uh, I don't know what you're daydreaming about, but you better get your mind back to business. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah Did I'm, you hear? Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on it now. Yeah, yeah, I'm right on it. Yeah, I'm not thinking about anything else. Here, uh, here we go. Uh, dear sirs, the copper tubing you sent us was defective. I am returning it for a full refund. If this is not... Well, that just about does it for this time, but good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, I'll be seeing you again real soon. And I'd like to leave you fellows with a little bit of advice. Don't criticize your wife's judgment. You just remember who she married. <laughs> just kidding you. There's a lot of truth in that. And I'd also like to say that I hope life would treat you real kind. And I hope that you have all that you ever dreamed of. Oh, I do wish you joy. I wish you lots and lots of happiness. But you know what? Above all of this, I wish you love. People don't know what to make of me taking a bath on television. My daddy don't like it at all. When he first saw this, he said, what the hell are you doing on television in a bubble bath? And my mama said, oh, you leave her alone. That's cute. She ain't as big as a bar of soap anymore. And I bet the rest of you's out there wondering if this is my real hair. Yes, it is. And I'm going to get out of this tub right now and get on a wig before I wreck my image. I'll see you out front. <laughs>
they say that they got everything in California and it's true they got the ocean they got the mountains they got the earthquakes <laughs> I tell you that last earthquake we had I tell you a while back it scared me to death I'd never been in an earthquake before you folks been in an earthquake yeah I guess you folks watching at home heard we had a big earthquake out here I mean I tell you the last one we had it shook so bad it shook my hair off <laughs> I don't mean my wig, I mean my real hair. <laughs> you see, I was taking a shower when it hit, but at least I had the presence of mind to run and stand in front of the doorway like they tell you to do for safety. <laughs> well, maybe the next time I'll also have the presence of mind to grab a towel. Cause the people on the tour bus just thought it was great. <laughs> That's the first time I ever got a standing ovation without singing. <laughs> that stuff is scary. But see, the worst part was I got real confused and I came back three times to take a bow. And I finished it off with two courses of Hey, Look Me Over. Anyway, we got a real good show for you to look over tonight. We got Patti LaBelle, Patrick Duffy, Christine Ebersole, and the Flying Karamazov Brothers, and maybe even a few surprises. So stick around. We'll be right back. about my date tonight and he is one of the nicest guys on television no I'm not talking about mr. Rogers no sir I'm talking sexy I'm talking handsome I'm talking and he's at the door excuse me <laughs> oh well Patrick Duffy <laughs> oh boy Hello. Hello. I have these for you. American beauties for an American beauty. Well, thank you. See, I told you he was nice. Oh, and I also have your newspaper. Uh, the boy was out front, so I just paid him for the month. You're kidding. No. This guy is out nice and me. Hey, why don't you sit down and have some champagne? I'll put these beautiful flowers right. in some water. Wow, what a beautiful place you have here. This is just wonderful. But I noticed your door squeaks just a little bit, so if you want me to, I'd be glad to run down the store and get some oil, and then we could just lube up those hinges, and it'd be great. <laughs> it would work wonderful. You must have been bitten by a Boy Scout. <laughs> uh, you know, you're my date tonight, so I want you to just relax. You don't have to be Mr. Fix-It. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tell you what, you stay here. Mm -hmm. I'll run and get us some hors d'oeuvres. No, no, you stay here. Let me run and get the hors d'oeuvres. Let me do the running. No, let, let's just both sit down, okay? We don't okay. need to eat right now anyway. Yeah. You know, sometimes a guy can be just too nice. I know, you're right. I am nice. I mean, the character I play is nice. My house is nice. My dogs are nice. My teeth, look, are nice. They are nice. <laughs> It's so monotonous, Dolly. Oh, I, I know what you're saying. You know, people sometimes say, oh, Dolly, she's so friendly, she's so sweet, she's so nice. Sometimes it's enough to just break your face out. It's so sweet. And... <laughs> <laughs> I 
You know, just once, just one time, I would love to play a despicable, filthy, offensive, totally disagreeable kind of guy. Well, Patrick, tonight is your lucky night. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not that nice. Oh. Uh, well, maybe I am that nice. But anyway, uh, but that's not what I meant. See, what I meant to say is if you really want to play the part of a miserable, low-down creep, then be my guest. I don't know how to be a miserable, low-down creep. Oh, you're an actor. Yeah. Why don't you go back outside? Yeah. Why don't you think up the most rotten, mean, despicable character you can think of and, and then come back in and, and be him? All right, thank okay. you so much. Right. I just have to remember how network executives talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'll be right back. Yep, I'll see you in a second. Okay. Okay. Okay, now let me see. I guess I should introduce him again. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm really nervous about my day tonight. Boy, he is one of the meanest, most honored, despicable characters. Yo! No, there he hey, is. Hey, don't! Keep me covered. Hey, don't! Hey, hey, that's too much for these, and I'm not gonna pay it. Well, hello! Miserable old woman out there. Listen, here's your paper. <laughs> Whoa, what a dump you live in. <laughs> this is terrible. Hey, you got something to drink? Well, would some champagne do, kind champagne. sir? Champagne, tui. Give me a, give me a warm beer and a dirty glass. Quick. All right. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, there's just two glasses here. Two glasses. Somebody here before me. No. You got somebody here before no. me. Well, just some nice guy. Nice guy. Tui. I hate nice guys. I hate nice guys. They, they really irritate me. You know. If I found a nice guy, you know, if he was a businessman, I'd ruin his business. If he was a cowboy, I'd ruin his cows. If he was a ball player, I'd... <laughs> he... Well, his, his whole team would be in trouble. Yeah. <clears throat> Boy, you know, you really are a rotten, ruthless man. You know it. Come here and give me a kiss. Whoa! Dolly, this, this doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel right? Hey, don't get carried away. I think we're on to something. No, here. no, 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 I mean... I mean, it, it feels fine, but it just doesn't feel comfortable. If you want to know the truth, yeah. you know, nice guys are what women dream about. Don't say dream to me. Last time a woman dreamed about me, I disappeared for a year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we're glad you're back, too, you know? Thanks. But before you disappear again, yep. how's about a nice little kiss? A nice kiss. Sure. Thank you. Oh, how sweet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just out of curiosity, uh, I wonder how that low-down, rotten, conniving, despicable character might have kissed me. Oh, I think something like this. Wow. Mm. Well, what do you think? I think we need a second opinion, folks. Mm -hmm. Which kiss do you like better? Kiss number one. A nice kiss. Or kiss number two. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think the people have spoken. I think we should stay on the couch and let the people speak again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Shattered my image with the stones I'd throw Shattered my image with the stones I'd throw A long time gone and a long time ago When I shattered my image with the stones I'd throw World is cruel and people are cold Now they shattered my image with the stones they throw Shattered my image with the stones they throw Do -do -do. But I ain't all bad And it hurts me more than it makes me mad You gather your stones by stooping so low Shatter my image with the stones you throw Shatter my image with the stones you throw If you live in a glass house, don't throw stones Don't shatter my image till you look at your own Look at your reflection in your house of glass 
Don't open my closet if your own's full of trash. Stay out of my closet if your own's full of trash. A long time gone and a long time ago when I shattered my image with the stones I throw. The world is cruel and people are cold. Now they shatter my image with the stones they throw. Shatter my image with the stones they throw. Shatter my image with the stones you throw. Don't shatter my image with the stones you throw. Shatter my image with the stones you throw. Don't shatter my image with the stones you throw. A lot of mail, and people really seem to like this part of the show about as good as anything on the show. So you boys should feel proud of yourselves. Of course, now, when we sing the little songs, we usually do a little something at the end to try to entertain you and certainly to try to entertain ourselves. <laughs> but for now, all we could think of to do on this one would be to do the short version. Yeah. Okay? You boys ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> shatter my image with the stones you throw. Don't shatter my image with the stones you throw. We have stooped to new levels. <laughs> get a forklift and get me up here. <laughs> singer. First time I ever heard her sing, I was in Nashville, and she was in Philadelphia. Now that is powerful. <laughs> How about a big hand for Patti LaBelle?
really proud of you. Oh. You look okay. great. Do you folks yeah. like our dresses? Please like our dresses. Yeah. We have the same designer. Yeah, we like them too. Tony in fact, Chase. Yeah, Tony does all the clothes for my show, and he's been working with Patty for a long mm -hmm. time. And you know how girlfriends are, they like to dress alike. Yep. And we said, well, make oh. us something that sort of looks alike, but not exactly alike. So I think these are great. And then I have on the foundation that belongs to you. A foundation Under, is, of course, it like bra. Like a bra. <laughs> the thing that I asked Tony to get me was a little too big, and he ended up giving me one, one of yours. Well, great. And that yeah. makes us bosom buddies, Bosom buddies. <laughs> Common. Lord, we love all these beads. We love all we this love, makeup and this hair. This hair. <laughs> I, said, I said, you girls are so spiritual. And one of my friends said, um, you we can see hair. your auras for your hair. I know. <laughs> we have hair. We have a lot of hair. I know. What is that about us? I don't know. We just like big hair. I mean, I just yeah. any kind of hair. I mean, I'll wear anybody's hair. <laughs> anybody's. I'm chewing gum, too. It keeps me from being so nervous. Is that why you chewing gum? Yeah. I wasn't going to mention it. I, I just... chew gum. It's so tacky, but I can't help it. Oh, that's okay. It's fine. It's just I'm gum. just glad to have you here. I feel good being with you, too. I really do. Well, thank you. So we... many people, and we have common, like in common, our manager, Sandy, and he told me so much about you, and he told you so much I about me. I know. He me, keeps saying for months, you got to meet And said that we're like you. twins. He said, yeah. you got to meet Patty. She's so nice. She's... And every time I see him, he kept saying, I said, would you just quit cramming that woman down my <laughs> so throat? She was if crying. I like her, I like her. If I don't, I don't. And then when we met, I love you. Uh, well, I think you're thank very you. special. And I know we both uh, love home. We're both, mm -hmm. uh, yes, we have a lot of faith. Bodies. We both believe in God. We love people. We love nails. We love. Oh, definitely love nails. As nails. a matter of fact, somebody's always saying to me, I cut how mine. do you play guitar? In well, those how long do you nails, play I say I play pretty good, but you know when I, you know I write a lot of songs when I don't have my guitar. Mm -hmm. You know I, I beat around on the dashboard in my car when I'm riding around writing uh -huh. songs. But then I have a little rhythm that we can do with these acrylic nails. Can you do that? Yep. Oh, good. You want to play a little song for them? Get up okay. close to your microphone. We're mic'd right down in here. Get up, get up close to them. Okay. That's cute. Can you hear that? See, we what did plan saying? this, but we didn't know how it was going to sound. Well, we were Sounds planning to see cute. if we could do something like. Mama little children love short and short and mama little children love short and bread. Mama little children love short and short and mama little children love short and bread. Wait, Patty. <laughs> Hoy cocinero, mañana una estrella. Yes, I heard tomorrow night at the El Adobe, 8 o'clock. When was you planning to tell me? At intermission? Por favor, Miss Dixie, nada más es un ratito mañana en la noche, sí, por favor. I'm going to have to think about it, Carlos. <gasps> I don't believe it, Earlene, is that you? Yeah, Dixie, it's me. Good <laughs> grief, oh. I haven't seen you in, what, three years? <laughs> More like five. Five years? Lord, we're getting old, woman. <laughs> Have a seat. I'll get us a cup of coffee. Stark and the kids in the car? Oh, Jamie's at camp. Uh, Cora Beth, she starts college tomorrow. Uh, and Starkey, he's at home. Home? You mean back in Glen Forks? What in the world are you doing in this part of the country but yourself? I left Dixie. I left Starkey. Home, everything. What on earth for? Was he cheating on you? No, it's got nothing to do with Starkey. It's got everything to do with me. Well, talk to me about it. Thing is, Dixie, I've been thinking, what am I? I was a wife and I made lunches. And I was a mother and I made more lunches. Picked up shoes. Now. Cora Beth's gone off, and Jamie, well, he don't need me no more. And Stark, well, they, they got a lunch wagon down at the lumber yard. What am I? Oh, you happen to be the wife of a very fine man, and you got two wonderful kids, you know that. And you're the best alto singer in the whole church choir. <laughs> church choir, yeah. You remember the Prell Tones, did you? <laughs> now, how could I forget the Prell Tones? Lord, we thought we was going to be the Supremes of country and western music. 
I bet we would have made it. You and me and Lawanda. Oh, maybe I don't know. Starkey begged me not to go. He asked me to stay and marry him. I bet the Preltones would have made it. But you don't know that. Now, I don't think Nashville is exactly going to fall down on their knees for three girls that got their names from a shampoo bottle. <laughs> don't you ever wonder what might have happened, though? You know what I really wonder? I wonder what it would have been like if I'd have had kids. Early, and you have no idea how many times I've wished I was you. <laughs> Me? Oh, well, yeah. Remember how we used to have the family reunions and all the women used to gather around under the trees with their babies, and we'd sit there with our little dolls. <laughs> how could I forget that? You used to breastfeed yours. <laughs> well, if you had a grand piano, wouldn't you want to play it? <laughs> oh, I tell you. Do you remember Aunt Murders, how she used to love to hold them little babies? Yeah. She couldn't have none of her own. I know one time I saw her playing with the dolls. Honestly, she was just sitting there rocking the little doll. Yeah, she was kind of crazy, wasn't she? <laughs> Please don't say that. I can see us at a family reunion 20 years from now. You'll be there with your kids and their kids and me. I'll probably be Aunt Murders. <laughs> I remember when the bloom was on the cotton When our hearts chased the clouds Like the swallow on the wing And when our cares, which were already few Were soon forgotten Just sitting on the front porch swing And we'd sit every Sunday And watch the married ladies And we'd dream of white dresses and church bells in the spring and they talk and paint their nails while they let us hold their babies sitting on the front porch swing where was i when the time came to join the married ladies why did i At my age and long to hold their babies sitting on the front porch swing when the mind longs to follow but the memory erases and the lips form the words but the heart no longer sings when the leaves in the hollow have been dyed to match our Sitting on the front porch swing Or oh, we'll dream of the time When the bloom was on the cotton When our hearts chased the clouds Like swallows on the wing But the words to the rhyme Are not the only things forgotten Sitting on the front porch Dixie. And you ain't leaving Starkey and the kids, or I'm going to marry Starkey and adopt them kids. <laughs> well, I don't know, Dixie. I really don't know about that one. I'm going to have to think it over. Well, you're entitled to think about it. Well, I'm staying just down the road at the Cactus View Motel. You are? Well, when I get off work, I'll come down there. Maybe we'll sit around and sing some of the Prell Tone songs with our shampoo <laughs> bottles. <laughs> sounds good to me. great. Oh. I'll see you after a while. Right. Everything's going to be all right now. I don't it's want you good worrying singing. yourself to death. I'll see you after a while. <laughs> Carlos, you see these little high heel shoes I'm wearing? Sí. Well, they wasn't made for stepping on anybody's dreams. Go ahead. Gracias, Miss Dixie. Gracias. <laughs> yeah, knock them dead. You won't regret it. <laughs> nope, no regrets. So why do I sit at my age and long to hold their babies? 
sitting on the front porch swing. This is my favorite part of the show, as you know, my Tennessee mountain home part, where I get to talk about and think about my life back in the Smoky Mountains. And I sometimes visit friends, but this time I'm going to just sing a song that's kind of special to me. It's a song I wrote. You know, there's a lot of stories and jokes about traveling salesmen and the farmer's daughter, and that's for a very good reason, because a woman can get awful lonesome out there in the middle of nowhere, and a strange man passing by can be a real source of excitement. You see, I know when I got to the age where my hormones started playing tricks on me, well, I started noticing all them traveling salesmen coming by, and I got to thinking they had more in their suitcase than a few brushes. You see, a couple of them used to come around, made regular rounds. We had the Watkins man, and then we had the Fuller Brush man, and they used to sell everything from brushes, kitchen appliances, things, or not appliances, but little stuff you'd use in the kitchen. And they had a lot of lemon pie filling, and of course, Mom used to always buy stuff like that from them. And of course, uh, I didn't care what they're selling. I just thought this one was awful cute. And if Mama didn't keep a real close eye on me, I was liable to be found somewhere down by the wash house or down by the spring or the creek, whatever. But believe you me, I was not the only girl that got caught up with a traveling salesman. So anyhow, I hope you get a kick out of this little song. And it goes like this. 